Blessed be God the Father and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God the Father invites into a relationship of love through his Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are God's children. In this name we rejoice and are glad. The feast of the Most Holy Trinity. Blessed be God the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit. As we prepare now for the celebration, we call to mind our failings. Lord, you forgive our sins and offer your generous mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you walk with us in love and invite us to model our lives on yours. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you make us God's children and inspire us to love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Put this question to the ages that are past, that went before you, from the time God created man on earth. Was there ever a world so majestic from one end of heaven to the other? Was anything ever hard? Did ever a people hear the voice of the living God speaking from the heart of fire? As you heard it, and remain alive. Has any God ventured to take to himself one nation from the midst of order by ordeal? signs, wonders, war with mighty hand and outrage armed, by fearsome terror. All these the Lord your God did for you before your eyes in Egypt. Understand this today, therefore, and take it to heart. The Lord is God indeed, in heaven above as on earth beneath, he and no other. 
Keep his law and commandment as I give them to you today so that you and your children may prosper and live long in the land the Lord your God gives you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy the people the Lord have chosen as his own. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his work to be trusted. The Lord loved justice and right, and filled the earth with his love. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. By his word, the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth, all the stars. He spoke, and it came to be. He commanded his springs to be. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. The Lord looks on those who revenge him, on those who hope in his love to rescue their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. A reading from the St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Everyone moved by the Spirit is a son of God. The Spirit you received is not the spirit of slaves bringing fear into your lives again. It is the spirit of sons and it makes us cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself and our spirit bear united witness that we are the children of God. And if we are the children, we are the hires as well, hires of God and co-hires with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory the eleven disciples set out for Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands I give you. And know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord.
Today, as I said, is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. Every time we begin our prayers, we begin with the, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's important that when we do make the sign of the cross, that we don't do in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We don't do it like that. We do it with respect, reminding ourselves of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three persons, but one God. The mystery of the Holy Trinity is at the heart of our faith, and it's a mystery of love. God loved the world so much, he loved the people, that he sent his only son into the world. And Jesus, when he had completed what his father had asked him to do, tells the, the disciples that they would receive the Holy Spirit who will give them the wisdom, the guidance, and the strength to go out and to preach all that Jesus had taught them. They will understand all that he taught them. Their lives would change. And as we remember the story last week, when we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, their lives most certainly changed. They spent the time when Jesus had ascended to heaven and the time that the Holy Spirit came down upon them. They spent in the upper room in prayer because they weren't 100% sure of what they were going to say to the people. But once they received the Holy Spirit, their lives completely changed so much so that the people who came from all other parts of the world could understand them in their own languages, what they were preaching. And God the Father, watching over them and loving them as he loves us. He loves us that he, we have the Son of God, Jesus himself, to follow, who gave us all the help that we need to try to be part of the family of God. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, a family. And we are part of that family, we became part of that family through our baptism, when we receive for the very first time the fullness of the Trinity. When the priest baptized the child, he baptized the child, giving the child a name and saying the prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God the Father pours out his love into the gift of creation. St. Francis of Assisi knew this when he spoke to the animals and praised the rabbit and made sure he did not walk on earthworms, but moved them to a place of safety away from the path. The first reading speaks of the closeness of God to the Jewish people and the invitation to listen and to follow God's commandments. And Jesus carried this on. And God's outpouring of love reaches a climax in the sending of the angel Gabriel to Our Lady, who agrees to become the servant and the mother of God. And the Son of God was born. And the Son of God, of course, suffered a terrible punishment and death to show how much he really and truly loves every single one of us. And he conquers all this through his resurrection and his ascension into heaven. 
And he tells us that he wants us to be with him. To call our Father through the power of the Holy Spirit, Abba, Father. St. John Paul II shed light on this when he said, Our God in his deepest mystery is not solitude, but a family. For he has within himself a fatherhood, sonship, and the essence of a family, which is love. That love in the divine family is the Holy Spirit. And so the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity invites us to deepen our understanding that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity and a trinity. Pope Francis tells us, the fruitful relationship of husband and wife becomes an image for understanding and describing the mystery of God himself. For in the Christian vision of the Trinity, God is contemplated as Father, Son, and Spirit of love. The triune God is a communion of love, and the family is its living reflection. The family is thus not unrelated to God's very being. We show that love for each other. And when St. Francis is speaking of the family, he's not talking just of the relationship family, mum, dad, and the children. He's talking of the whole family, the family of the church. And that's why it's important that we begin our prayers with the sign of the cross, saying the words in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in so doing, we are showing our love for Almighty God. Let us try and remind ourselves that every time we make the sign of the cross, that we say it with fervor, we say it with love. So we stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and arose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the love of God, the the Holy Trinity, we offer our prayers to the Father through his Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for Pope Francis, for our Bishop Allen, for all the bishops of the church, that they may shepherd the church with tender love and mercy, which welcomes others. 
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for world leaders that they may build peace upon the foundations of justice and care for those who are weakest and most vulnerable in society. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all families that they may witness to the love of God present in their midst by the love they show to others. Lord, in your mercy. Pray too for all the sick. We pray especially those who have the virus. We pray for the doctors and the nurses who do such tremendous work in trying to heal them. We pray for, sadly for those who have died and remember all their families. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for all who have died. Remember especially Catherine Butler, who's for the, whom the Mass we're offering the Mass for, the Foundation Mass. We pray too for Kenville Paul Lequeux, who sadly died, a close friend of one of our parishioners here. We pray especially for all whose anniversary it is at this time, that they all find eternal rest and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. We ask Mary to join with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, three persons in one, merciful Father, compassionate Son, and consoling Holy Spirit, we ask to receive and grant our prayers through Christ our Lord. Bless you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread. We offer you fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Bless thee, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash us, O Lord, from our iniquities. Cleanse us all of our sins. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. 
For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubims too and seraphims, who never cease to carry out each day as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving to you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and to recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and poem by divine teaching we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Now to spiritual communion for those watching online. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you are already there, and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen.
since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the spirit of his Son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. Let us pray. <clears throat> May you receive in this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul. As we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sit down for a few moments, please. We just got the last two days of the month of May when we've been asked by Pope Francis to pray the rosary at six o'clock each day to pray alongside him and many millions of other people. Well, let's see if we can do it for the last two days. It'll be at five o'clock our time because Rome, of course, is now ahead of us. So if we can do that and pray along with the Holy Father, it'd be, it'd be lovely to end the month of May. The Comboni Fathers, the Verona Fathers, were to, due to be here this weekend, but because of the lockdown, we decided we postpone it until the 25th and the 26th of September, the week of that, that weekend. So we hope, just please do keep them in your prayers. The Eucharistic Ministers, my apologies for the, anyone who did come along last Thursday. I, I should have announced at all the Masses that it was postponed because the com we were having a comfort confirmation meeting for our young people, which of course was also postponed because uh, Gianni wasn't very well, but he's okay now. But so the next meeting for the confirmandi will be on Thursday, the, the 3rd of June, the Thursday, the next, Thursday, the 3rd of June. No, that's wrong. That's this week, isn't it? No, it's next week. Let's see, where did I put? I put the third, but it's not right. <laughs> anyway, it's the following. If Tuesday's the 8th, it'll be the 10th of June. Thursday, the 10th of June. And uh, the Eucharistic ministers, your meeting, will have a meeting on Tuesday, the 8th of June, at 7 o'clock, here in the church. And we would like all Eucharistic ministers to attend. There'll be a meeting of the parents for First Communion children on Wednesday at 7.30 and for the children on Saturday at 9.15 in the church as well. We still have some gift aid boxes there. We do thank the lady who spent a lot of hours getting, getting the boxes to the people they belong to. Um, done a tremendous job, but there are still some there and if any of you know of somebody in your street who maybe hasn't had their box, you could pop down the back there and have a look and take it to them. The rest of the news then is in the newsletters. So we stand please for the blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go forth proclaiming the gospel of the Lord. Thank you all very much. And I was going to say, you're going to have a really lovely day, but it ain't looking that good at the moment. Hopefully it'll brighten up. Have a lovely day.